Welcome to the third session of the chapter Data Handling. Till now, you have learned many things about mean. In this class, we will learn some other measures of central tendency. So, let's get started. Here, the weekly walking distances in kilometers of two groups of the same number of people is given. The average kilometers walked for both the groups turned out to be 15 kilometers. So, can we say that both the groups have similar walking patterns? Yes, if we look at the mean, this is what we can say. But if we look at the numbers closely, see in group A how the numbers are spread out and in group B how the numbers are clustered and more consistent. The mean did not account for this spread of data. Even though the averages of both the groups are same, you can see how different the numbers within the group are. And it becomes important and it is informative to know the spread. We call this the range. The range is the difference between the highest and lowest values in the group of data. Range of group A is 30 minus 1. Similarly, range of group B is 20 minus 11. This range gives an idea of how spread out or how close the numbers are in a group of data. The prices of meals in restaurants in a street are given as follows 35 rupees 50 rupees 70 rupees 40 rupees 65 rupees 100 rupees and 550 rupees to get a sense of what this data is we can try to calculate the average price of meals let us try that So the average will be 910 divided by 7 which is 130 rupees. Children can you see is how well the average of 130 rupees is representing these values of data. You can see that almost all the numbers are less than this number and why do you think this is? It is because of this very big number compared to the other numbers. So, this huge number is making the average shift towards it compared to the other numbers. So, we call such numbers as outliers and in such scenarios, the mean may not be a good representative of the group of numbers. So, what else can we use in this situation? There is one more measure of central tendency called median. So, we will look at what this is. So, the first step is the given data has to be arranged in an order. We will try to sort this data. Now this data is in ascending order. What median is, is, so median is the middlemost number in a group of data which is sorted. So what is the middlemost number here? As you can see, 65 is the middlemost number. So we say the median of this group of data is 65 and as you can see, the number 65 represents this group of data better than the mean of 130 rupees, isn't it?
So, you know that median is the middle most number. So, let us see what the middle number is. So, 7 is the middle number. The median is 7. Children, is it correct? No, first we have to arrange the data in an increasing or decreasing order, isn't it? Only then we will be able to identify the middle number. So, we will arrange the data in an order. Now we have sorted the data. Now let us look at what the median is. So the median is 3. As there are 5 numbers here and 5 numbers here. So this is the middlemost number. We will try the same with this data. So first, we have to sort this data. Now we have sorted the data. Now we can look for the middle number. Oh, we are not able to identify the middle number as, as we have an even number of data. That is, we have 8 numbers. When we have odd number of data, we will easily be able to identify what the middle number is. But when we have even numbers, then how can we tell what the middle number is? What we can do is, we can take the two middlemost numbers and take their average as median. So the median of this data will be the mean of the two middle numbers. Mean of 1.8 and 2. That is nothing but 1.8 plus 2 divided by 2. So, this gives 3.8 divided by 2. So, the median will be 1.9. So, when we have odd number of data points, we can directly take the middlemost number. But when we have even number of data points, we take the average of the two middlemost numbers. This time, I have a pun with mean and median. Here it is. Ambani walked into a crowded cafe on the street side. A sharp-eyed statistician customer yelled, The average income of all of us has just hit billions of rupees. Another statistician sighed, Ah, uh, looks like he doesn't know median. As you saw earlier, mean is susceptible to such outliers. Now, some of you may be thinking, so, is median better than mean? Not always. It depends. Sometimes mean may give a better representative and other times the median may give or sometimes both of them may give a good representative of the data. Take a look at this. See what the first group of numbers are. So, these are the median and mean of these numbers. And now, we will change two of these numbers in this group. And See what happened to the mean and median. As you can see, the median is same for both the groups of the data. And the median did not reflect this change of numbers, whereas mean was changed. This is because mean considers all the data points and gives a representative, whereas median looks at the middle number in the sorted data set. A shopkeeper kept note of the number of shirts sold of each size. Now, he thought of ordering some more shirts to replenish his stocks. How many shirts of each size should he order? Children, you may be thinking, as we have learnt about mean, let us calculate the average shirts sold for each size. Let us calculate what the average is and see.
So the total is 105 divided by we have five different sizes. So that gives So the average pieces of each size sold is 21. So what do you think children? Should he order 21 pieces of each size? Will that be a good decision? No, isn't it? As you can see, the sizes M and L are being sold more compared to other sizes. So a me so Using mean in this kind of scenario may not be suitable. Instead, what he can do is, he can choose to order more of these sizes and fewer of the other sizes based on this information. Mode is the observation that occurs most often. A survey was conducted in a class of students asking about their favorite hobby and here are their choices. Now to see how many people like each hobby, we will use the method of tally that you have learnt before. So T A T G S R A T A S R A a B C G G A R G C C A G C R T, S, A and G. So this is 5 plus 3, 8. This is 4 and this is 8. This is 4, 3 and then 3. Now children, which is the hobby that is liked most? So we have two equal winners here. That is arts and crafts and also the games. So these two are the most liked activity of this group of children. So we say that the mode of this group is 8 and there are two modes. One is the art and craft and the other is games. So it is very much possible that a group of data can have more than one modes. The victory margins in football of some matches are given. Let us see what was the most common victory margin. We can find it using mode. But children, when we have the complete data, if we sort or arrange them in an order, then we can count easily. So what I will do is, I will arrange these numbers in ascending order. Now you can see it becomes much more easier to count. Here as we already have the data sorted, we don't need to use the tally bars. We can directly count the number of occurrences of each number and then make a note of it. So there are 12 ones and then there are also 12 twos and there are 6 threes and Five fours, three fives, and then two sixes. Which was the most occurring victory margin? It is both one and two, isn't it? So here also, this group of data has two modes that is one and two. So the numbers one and two occur equal number of times. And we can also calculate the total number of matches adding these numbers. Cricket is a game filled with so many numbers. 
And looking at these numbers, you can find a lot of interesting and amusing facts and also many many records by the players. So here is one such aspect. Children, you all know MS Dhoni and Shikhar Dhawan, don't you? Dhoni has batted in 297 matches and Dhawan in 133 matches. In these matches, Dhoni has scored 10,773 runs and Dhawan has scored 5,688 runs. Now, we want to compare the batting performances of these two players. What can we use? Yes, average is a good choice. So, we will calculate the average runs scored by each player as the total runs scored divided by the number of matches they batted. Don't worry, I have already done it for you. These are the average runs. Dhoni's average is 36.27 and Dhawan's average is 42.7. So looking at this, you may say Dhawan's performance is better. But children, the ICC, that is the International Cricket Council, they say that Dhoni's average is 50.6, whereas Dhawan's average is 45.1. What? But why? Don't they know how to calculate average properly? Or is it because they like Dhoni more? Think children. Let me ask you this. Dhawan gets to bat in the opening, whereas Dhoni comes after 4 or 5 batsmen get out. So, Dhawan will have more opportunities to score more runs compared to Dhoni. So, don't you think it is not fair to compare just these averages? So, what the Cricket Council does is, they consider all these factors like the batting position, the number of times they were not out and other factors to calculate the average runs of the players. Sometimes just the bare average calculation may not give a good measure. We should also consider the context and situations of the information presented. The heights of a family's members are given and they were building a house and they wanted to decide the heights of the doors in their house. Given these heights, what do you think we should use to decide the doors heights? Mean, median or mode? Think children, what suits best for this scenario? I will show you each of these measures. What do you think now? What should be the height of the door? As you might have observed, none of these measures are appropriate for this situation, isn't it? Whichever measure we use, there will be persons taller than that and they will have to bend down each time they cross the doors. So what did you learn from this? We can't blindly use these measures of central tendency. We can use them where they are suitable and meaningful. Raghav had a mango tree in front of his home. He noted the number of mangoes that fell on the ground in each month for a year. If you have to get an idea of this data, what would you use? Mean, median or mode? These are the measures. You can observe that none of them represent the data properly. Mean does a better job compared to median and mode here, but it is still not giving a proper sense of the numbers. Why do you think this is, children? Taking into account the months where it is not the mango season is meaningless when we are calculating the central tendency here, isn't it? This distorts our measures. So, we can ignore the non-season months. Now, we have refined our data and made it more meaningful based on the context.
Now we will calculate these measures based on the refined data. The new measures are Now you can see that they represent data better than before. Here is a piece of humor, this time with all the three M's, that is mean, median and mode. There you go. Median and mode walked into a restaurant. The waiter there asked, where is your other friend? Then mode said, we don't like her anymore, she is mean. Now I will show you some statements. I want you to. Look at it, think and tell whether that statement is always true or never true or only sometimes true. The mode is one of the data points. Always, isn't it? Let us look at examples. We know that mode is the most occurred data point in a group of data. So it always has to be one of the data points. The mean is not one of the numbers in the data. Sometimes yes and sometimes no. We have looked at many examples regarding this, isn't it? As you can see here, in the first group of data, the mean is one of the numbers in the data. And in the second group of data, mean is not part of the group. The median is one of the numbers in the data and is the middle number. Sometimes yes and sometimes no. We will look at some examples. In the first group of data, you can see that median is one of the numbers in the data and also the middle number. Whereas in the second group, the median is the average of the two middle numbers, that is the average of 2 and 4. And here it is not the middle number. Half of the students taking an exam will score less than the mean and the other half of the students will score higher than the mean. Sometimes true and sometimes not. It is not always true that there will be equal number of data points to the left of mean and the right of mean. In data consisting of only even numbers, the mean or average of such data will be an even number. Again, sometimes yes and sometimes no. Look at these examples. Here, in the first group of data, the mean is an even number, whereas in the second group of data, the mean is an odd number. Mean, median or mode may lie outside the range of the data. Never, isn't it? It's not possible. We all know that mean, median or mode will always lie within the range of the data. That is, they will always be between the smallest and highest data points inclusive. If I remove the number 1 from a data set, its mean increases as 1 is a small number. If I remove the number 100 from a data set, its mean decreases as 100 is a large number. Sometimes yes and sometimes no. So this depends on what the value of mean is. If the mean is greater than 1, then removing 1 will increase the mean, whereas if the mean is less than 1, then removing 1 will decrease the mean. Similarly, if the mean is less than 100, then removing 100 will decrease the mean, whereas if the mean is greater than 100 and removing 100 will increase the mean. Now that you have learnt about mean, median and mode, we will explore them together and find some more interesting properties. What you have to do is, I will show you a list of conditions. You have to find groups of numbers which satisfy those conditions. Please make a note of these conditions. So 
you have to find groups of numbers for each condition to be satisfied. I will give you an example. Say for the first condition that is mean is equal to median is equal to mode. One group of numbers that satisfies this condition is 2, 4, 4 and 6. You can see that the mean, median and mode for these numbers is 4. There are many more possibilities for each condition. You just have to come up with one group of numbers that satisfies each condition. You can note down these conditions now. This activity is very exploratory and amusing in nature and you will have fun doing this. You can also get a different level of understanding about mean, median and mode and how they can vary with different groups of numbers with this activity. Do try it out before the next session. See you in the next class.